Hello everyone, I just want to welcome you once again to Babel TV and today we have a special guest all the way from America. We have Sir Milton Alvarez and today we're gonna hear his uh, witness on how he came to Christ and how, he, how his life got saved. So I want to welcome you sir. Good morning. How are you? Jay Masi? Yeah, Jay Masi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I would like to inform all the viewers that right now Milton Alvarez sir is here in Nepal and he's going to do a lot of stuffs for Nepali people doing some social work visiting some places and uh, help some needy guys out there maybe he has many interest to come here in Nepal so before listening to his witness we just want to know sir like uh, why did you come here in Nepal and what's your purpose well, I came here to Nepal to uh, be in the country, be with the people, help the people. Uh, this will be my third trip to uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. Love the people, love the country. And uh, we also want to get people interested in Nepal for people to come here and help the Nepalese people out. Okay, so uh, it's really interesting that many people are interested to come to Nepal. So uh, actually, what are the attractions for you to come here in Nepal? Many say that they like nature, they like people, they like uh, to visit some sort of uh, uh, hilly areas, go for trekking, and some Christians, they are interested in doing mission work. So what was your real interest in coming here to Nepal? Well, my interest is, uh, I always say, uh, what does Nepal need? What can we do to help your people? As your people help us, I always, when we travel, uh, we always ask, what do the people need? Uh, my uh, three trips before this, uh, we brought medical missions in, we brought medical supplies, we prayed for people, visit orphanages, schools. So I think mainly uh, just to be kind to the people and help the people with what they need here. What are the urgent needs that uh, the Nepalese people need? Okay, thank you so much. So let's, let us jump into the main uh, issue or main subject. I just want to ask you, like, how was your life before knowing God, before knowing Christ? How was your life? You are a Jew, we know that really well. Um, so Jewish we're really interested on your perspective on, uh, you know, uh, actually uh, coming out of that box, you know, that Jewish type of traditional and orthodox type of thing and jumping into this Christianity thing, uh, knowing the New Testament and just uh, believing Christ. So how was your life? before believing Christ of the New Testament? Well, my life was, uh, I had a good life. I lived all over the world. Uh, I started flying airplanes when I was younger, and my eyesight was not good enough to become a pilot. So I started working on ships, and eventually I became a captain and traveled all over the world to more than 60 nations on the ships. And at the same time, I was not doing things that were good. Uh, we were smuggling, and um, I didn't know God. Uh, I had been through various uh, different religions, and then in 1986, I had an encounter with uh, Jesus, and it, that changed my whole life around. So now, uh, for 36 years, I've been uh, a Christian serving the Lord and uh, going to many nations. So you said that uh, you try to test many religions. So can you uh, tell me some of the religions of faith or beliefs that you went through before knowing Christ? Well, I did a lot of smuggling, a lot of bad things in a lot of different countries. And my life was not good in that aspect. Uh, I knew people that were no good around the world and um, I didn't believe in God. So uh, my life was just a life of um, sin. You know, I didn't care what I did. I lived all over the world. Uh, I had been to Singapore, Paris, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Colombia, many, many countries. And I would just uh, travel around the world just uh, doing things that were not good. And then I had an encounter with Christ in 1986. And that changed my whole life around. From day one, when I met uh, Jesus, my savior, uh, my life has been impacted to do God's work around the world to help people and be good. And uh, one of the things about Nepal is that I love this country. I've been uh, 
probably around 100 nations, uh, but I have a love for Nepal. I just, uh, I feel like it's home for me. Okay, it's really good to hear about that. Uh, you are a Jew, but how did you actually, you know, could not get to know God? Because in a Jewish family, maybe, I don't know, like I heard that uh, you are taught of God since your very early age. So what, what was the gap that kept you away from knowing God? Well, I didn't believe in God, and uh, I didn't know that I was a Jew till about 10 years ago. I had a DNA, and I'm, well, we always thought we were Jewish, uh, but 10 years ago I really found out that I was a Jew with my DNA and everything. And then uh, now apply it more to, you know, uh, believe in God in the Jewish sense, because Jesus was Jewish. And we make many trips to Israel, so that's the highlight of my life because that's really what changed my life. That knowing that you're a Jew and, and Israel was uh, the homeland of Jesus, he was Jewish, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach, makes such a big difference in our lives. Wow, uh, it's just an interesting thing like you have tried to find out identity. So you said that you did a DNA test. So what actually uh, uh, encouraged you? Because you, th you thought that uh, you, you had an impression that you might be a Jew. Right. So maybe that got you into, uh, you know, testing your DNA. Yes. So uh, what actually are other your encouragement, other, uh, in, you know, your, um, the curiosity that caused you to, to go through test to know that you are a Jew or not? So. Can you well, you know, um, Thomas, uh, for years I, I think I knew I was Jewish, but didn't really have uh, an establishment. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I was uh, around Jewish people all my life in New York City, and uh, the Jews loved us, so they knew that I was Jewish. I didn't. And uh, my parents are Spanish, and, uh, but we would gravitate to the Jewish people. They would come over, they wanted to do a bar mitzvah for me, which is the consecration for the young man at 13. And uh, my father was not sure about that because uh, he didn't know what being a Jew was. And uh, well, but everywhere I went around the world, Jews were my friends, very good friends. Everywhere in the world I would meet Jewish people, so I knew that, you know, uh, something was there. And until I did the DNA, found out that I had Portuguese, Jewish blood, Spanish blood, uh, Jewish, uh, it thrilled me. It was just so amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. So you said that uh, it had been only 30 years that you have known God, but you are above 70 years, right? 71. 71 years. Yes. So for f uh, 40 years, you did not know Jesus Christ really well? No. No, uh, so 1986, I, so, I met Jesus. So, uh, due to a lot of things in the world and due to your work, due to your relationship, due to your own faith, uh, your beliefs, uh, kept you knowing from God, right? No, yes, yes. Uh, so, so how did you come to know uh, Jesus? That's the main thing that I really want to know. Well, in 1986, I had been living all over the world. Um, I was traveling a lot. I became a ship's captain, pilot. And my life was very empty, Thomas. I felt like I had all this money, prestige, I had, you know, promotions, uh, titles, but yet I was not happy. I was very unhappy. And I would go home and, and sometimes I would cry at nighttime because I felt so empty. And the more I got, the more I received, I realized that the more empty I had, and the amazing thing was that uh, people around me that was very successful, they were happy, but yet I was very unhappy. So I knew there was something missing. So in 1986, uh, I was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I was in a maritime school to study to become a pilot, ship's pilot. And I realized that I didn't want to live anymore and I wanted to take my life. I had been in situations around my life where I was close to dying or being killed, and uh, I realized that uh, at 30, around 36 years old, I didn't want to live anymore. That was it. And uh, I turned on the TV, and there was uh, uh, 
a pastor speaking, he was an evangelist, his name was Nicky Cruz, and he spoke my whole life story. And that touched my heart. I th I, it was like God was speaking to me. And he said uh, that, you know, that your life was empty, that you're ready to take your life. He knew everything. And I changed the channels because I didn't want to hear it. And I changed the channel 84 times, and every 84 times it was Nikki Cruz. And it was like God was saying that I love you and I'm not going to let you go. And then I realized that God did love me. I never knew who God was. And in that moment, I embraced God like never before. And I asked uh, Yeshua into my heart. And from that moment on, my life, my whole life changed. Wow. Uh, such a nice uh, thing to hear. Like, you, you were thirsty inside. You were not satisfied with life. Oh, no. Though you had everything, you had riches, you had your everything. all accomplishment, you had your uh, titles, you had your education, you traveled from one place to another place. Yet, uh, there was something deep inside that was a vacuum, something really empty. You felt like a desert inside, a, a land without any plants, a land without any water, right? A really pathetic uh, type of experience. Many people experience these kind of things and they want to take their life, you know, because they don't have peace inside. So, uh, actually you said that a sermon from this uh, guy, from a servant of God, actually touched you, right? So, what happened in your heart at that moment? Wow, uh, Thomas, it's, it's amazing because I have been through many religions, I'm not going to mention, uh, but every religion that I went through, it was just like for a time, I would enjoy it, all of a sudden it was over. But in this moment, Thomas, um, it was like a, like a bursting, something in me knew that this is what I needed all my life. And, uh, you know, it, it was just, I came home. I felt like I was home. This was what I was looking for. And, and you know, I have a lot of friends that are very successful. I'm a doctor. I have a, also a doctorate. I do medical work, too. Uh, and, um, you know, in the past I retired. But, um, you know, even with all that, you feel like you're empty. I used to go home and I would cry. And I said, why am I crying? Because there was that emptiness, that vacuum. And you know, Thomas, uh, it's so amazing because people around the world, uh, you'll find that most successful people that don't have a relationship with God, they're empty. They can have boats, they can have cars, airplanes, money, millionaires, but yet there's an emptiness here. They're not happy. And then they think that happiness is to have more cars, more, uh, you know, houses, more riches. But, you know, Thomas, I found out that the material things of this world don't mean anything. Because it's like I tell people, when you die, you're not going to take nothing with you. You leave just the way you came. So. Yeah. so the interesting thing is that your perspective started changing when you came to God, when you came to Christ. Oh, everything Your changed. lifestyle started yeah. getting changed. And everything suddenly changed. people also feel the calling of God in their life. Like, so how did you come to know your calling in God? Did you have a new calling or like God said you to, uh, you know, carry on the work or the profession that you had been doing in the past? So was there any kind of change in your vocation, in your work, mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, service? Or in, did you try to uh, change your way and lifestyle? Yeah, you know, uh, Tom, it's very funny you asked that. That's a beautiful question because I knew the moment that I came and, and met God that changed my life around, I knew that my life was to do good to people around the world. The same way I, I traveled to 60 nations, I have 100 now, I knew that then my life was to give people things that they needed. Uh, when I was in the world, I was very stubborn, I was very egotistical, I wanted everything for me, but yet I did help a lot of people, because I had a lot of money, I lost all my money, and then, but now I realized that when I came to God, that my essence was to go out and help people, to do good, just like the Bible says, you know. Okay, so uh, you wanted to do good to the people? Yes. So, 
what means like you wanted to help them uh, if they are poor you you want to help them to be empowered give them some life skills or is it coaching or like you wanted to do some sort of sermon kind of thing preaching kind of thing what was it was it some sort of humanitarian kind of work or like was it some sort of like you know building that them in christ through preaching the word of god uh, you know uh, giving them training um, uh, you know like enrolling them in the bible colleges what, what kind of uh, help were you giving to the people after you came to christ well you know you read the bible and the bible is so real where i had never read the bible before and uh, all of a sudden when i read the bible it became real go to the homeless go to the widows go to the prisons go to the children uh, feed the poor and, and then i realized that that is what i had to do and i felt good about it from day one i started doing that uh, you know we we around the world we go to prisons i visit prisons visit the prisoners we feed the homeless we work with the widows uh, we give to the people on the streets uh, so basically, you know, the Bible becomes so real that everything that Jesus did is what we need to do. There's no, no confusion there. Help the people, help the nations, meet the people. You know, uh, what is it that people need? Well, prayer, food, houses, whatever that we can help. And then we find, here's the beauty of it, Thomas, that when we do these things, which is called Sadaqah, in Israel, in, in Hebrew, sadaka is to do good works. But you see, now you're doing the good works according to what the scriptures say, and it becomes more real. Because the Word of God is alive. When you read the Bible, I've never read anything like the Bible. The Bible, when you read the scriptures, they are living words. And then when you do them, you realize that you're applying what the Bible tells you to do. You don't, you know, I got people, Thomas, that tell me, oh, I got to pray for this, I got to pray for that. No, you don't have to pray, you do. You don't have to pray to feed the people. You don't have to pray to go to the prisons. You don't have to pray to go to the widows. I, I work with a lot of widows here in Nepal. I love it because they need us. And, and you know, it's, it's such a beautiful word that when you do what Jesus did, do what the Bible did, says to do, it becomes living. It's, it's alive, you know. So it's a practice that you just don't do the works to do them. But when you apply what the Bible says, it becomes a reality. Okay, thank you so much. Now let us uh, uh, help us know about your family, like how your family background or like your wife, your children. How about they? Like how, how are they in God? Or like have they come to Christ? Can you tell us something about that? Well, I have eight children, and I have uh, five children from a previous marriage, five, and uh, I lived a life of sin. It was so sad because I feel so bad when I came to Christ because uh, I had lived with many women, and uh, three of my children right now, four, they're in California, and then I have uh, four at home, and they're all serving God, beautiful. They, they love God, they serve God, they do God's work. My, uh, one of my oldest sons is a pastor now, his name is Joshua, been uh, preaching since he was five years old. I didn't know who God was till 36. So all my family now serves the Lord, my wife serves the Lord, she's a beautiful teacher, she teaches the Jewish Torah. Uh, her name's Aneda, so she travels a lot with me, and uh, she does God's work at home. Same thing, feeding the poor, homeless, we go to the prisons, we go to the, um, you know, the widows. Such a beautiful work, because when these people come and, and you minister to them, they know it's God. It's so beautiful. And I see that in Nepal. I see a lot of uh, what God is doing here because he loves this nation. It's a very important nation for God. And such a beautiful nation. I have three things I say for Nepal that I love Nepal. I just love Nepal. And three things that I've seen about Nepal that is so powerful that I think a lot of people don't realize. One, Nepal is the closest place to heaven. You know why? Mount Everest. It's the highest mountain in the world, yes. the most beautiful mountain, 29,000 feet, Mount Everest. So what, what does that mean, Thomas? That the top of Mount Everest is the closest place to heaven. 
And then two, it's in between the biggest nations of the world. Yeah. Nepal is in between India and China. That means God put Nepal here for a purpose. Three, I met a Gurkha general about two trips ago. I met him at the airport. Beautiful Gurkha army. Do you know that the Gurkha army is the most powerful army in the world? Yeah. Nations all over the world contract the Gurkhas to protect them because the Gurkhas are the most fearless fighters. They're the greatest army in the world. So that's the third thing that Nepal has that's so beautiful. Now, as a Christian, you see the Nepal, Nepalese Gurkha as a warrior, and we become that in the spirit because we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And that is the Gurkha warrior spirit that is in us. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? And, and, and your nation is so blessed. People yeah. don't realize. People say it's a little nation, but God doesn't need anything big. He takes what's little and he makes it big. When, when Jesus was born, he was born in a little, little some town, Bethlehem. But yet all the world knows who Bethlehem is. And the same thing, I believe, for Nepal. Okay. So what's the third thing? Like you said, uh, Gorkha and the Himalayas. So what's the, th what's the third thing? You said three things special about oh, Nepal. Oh, three things. One is the highest mountain in the world. So you're the closest to heaven of any country in the world. Yeah. Nepal is right there next to heaven, the yeah. highest mountain. Two, God positioned you between China and India, which okay. are the biggest populations in okay. the world, 1.1 yeah. billion on each uh, China and uh, India. India. So that means Nepal's got a purpose for these nations. Yeah. See, it's little, but God uses the little things. And then third, the third is the Gurkha. I, yeah. I love that. Yes. The Gurkha soldiers, they're so proud, so powerful. And people all over the world love the Gurkhas because they're the most fearless fighters, you know. Not that we want to see a war, but when they come in, nobody wants to go near the Gurkhas. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. And that's how your heritage is here, to know that you have a Gurkha army that's going to protect Nepal. I think that's beautiful. Yes. So, uh, really interesting about how uh, you got so much of uh, inspiration to come to Nepal. You said about three things, like the one is about the Mount Everest, the other thing is about Gorkhalis, and the third thing is about Nepal bet being between India and China. Right. Isn't that beautiful? Be uh, yeah, it's really beautiful because God can really walk through Nepal for exactly. both China and India, you know, north and south. Exactly. The one country is, uh, you know, very atheistic country the other country is very hinduistic country very too extreme one is very religious the other one is not so religious and in between there is nepal nepal is open to everything so like uh, can you tell us something uh, you know when you came to god uh, when you came to christ what was the most extraordinary thing that you found out in christ that set him apart so that uh, you would change your thoughts, you would change your ways to come to Christ. So, w what was the main thing that you find out in Christ? Oh, you know, it was so beautiful, man. Uh, it's not a religion, it's a lifestyle. When I came to Christ, the moment that I said, Jesus, come into my heart, my whole life changed, Thomas. Everything. I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped cursing, I stopped going out with women, and it was like, Jesus wash me. Uh, Psalms 42, 7 says, uh, deep calleth unto deep by my waves and my billows will I, um, you know, immerse you. Uh, so I felt like I was baptized right there. The minute that I asked Christ into my life, my whole life changed. I started crying, I looked out at the skies were so blue because I was in so much sin, uh, you know, um, the greenery of the trees. I was in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. I just started crying because everything looked so beautiful. And it was like God was washing me, taking all the sin away. And then I asked God that I didn't want to sin no more to protect me. And of course we sin all the time, but I didn't want to do anything that would hurt God. And at that moment, it was like instantaneous. My whole life was changed. 
I knew that I was in the hands of God. And it, it was just totally changed. And you know what the beauty of it is? Uh, I had been in assassination attempts. I was almost killed in other countries. Um, I had gone to jail and uh, I was never scared. I was foolish. Uh, there's a saying in English that God takes care of fools and drunks. I was a fool, I was a drunk. And uh, so I did things that were crazy. I should have been killed many, many times. But yet, I, as foolish as I was, I was never scared. That Probably that's what protected me. But when I came to Christ, I felt that I was in his hands eternally. In Jeremiah uh, 31.3, the Word of God says, I love you with an eternal love. The minute that I came to Christ, God showed me that from the beginning of time, He had loved me and He was taking care of me. And He's saying that to you right here, Thomas, that He loves you and, he, and He's taking care of you and we're going to be with Him forever. So my life here doesn't mean anything. The day I have to, I'm 71 now. I never thought I'd get older than 18, and the years have just gone by. I said, wow, where did those years go? And you know, Thomas, today I'm more secure than ever before. Because I know that if I go, I'm going to heaven. I'm sure yes. about that. And I tell the listeners, this is something that's promised to you when you come to make Christ your Lord and Savior, Jesus. You're going to heaven forever and ever. And yes. nothing can stop that. Yeah, you know, it's a beauty. So the thing that I really was curious was about your Jewish heritage. You know, you wanted to find out whether you were Jew or not. So can you tell me? Uh, uh, you said that you you had been a feeling like you were a Jew since a very young age and this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So how do you really feel right now, uh, being as a American Christian Jew? How do you really feel? Because uh, you are a type of a you know, if you look at a heritage. Uh, you are like a refugee, you know, uh, traveling from one place to another place. You don't have your own land. But right now, I know that you are an American Jew. Right. Uh, so you don't have a problem. But still, how do you really feel being a Jew uh, in a place like this, world like this? Like you, you, have, you don't belong to your country, Israel, right now. You are in America and you talked about Portuguese and Spain heritage that you have. You're mixed up with those kind of stuff. How do you really feel about all of those kind of stuff and how do you really find the purpose of God in all of those kind of myths, in all of those kind of problems, in all of those kind of hectic kind of thing, you know? How do you find the purpose of God in that? Well, God, now you find more because Jesus was Jewish. So when you come to realize that Jesus was not Catholic, he was not, you know, uh, Baptist, he was not a religion, he was a lifestyle, he was a Jew. And, and when you come to realize that you are a Jew, it means more in your life. You see, because as Jewish people, Christians, they grafted in. But when you have the Jewish blood, you're a Jew. And, uh, and it means so much more. You know, today I was looking at what happened in Germany. I study a lot of history. And it was so sad to see the Holocaust, how many Jews were killed. But that doesn't matter. You see, because the Jewish people are the true people of God. And uh, the, the Jewish people, uh, Paul said to the Jew first, and he loves everybody, the Christians, you know, but to the Jew first. So what happens in history is that the Jew has, see, the enemy, Satan, knows that he has to take the Jew out. Because then if he takes the Jew out, he finishes Jesus, which he can never do. But then you had Herod kill all the babies. You had Pharaoh kill the, you know, the Egyptians kill the Jews. Then you had the Holocaust. Six and a half million Jews were killed. And uh, Hitler thought that he would get rid of the Jews forever because the Jews are God's heritage. And you, as a Nepalese, you're a Jew. You're grafted in. You see, you gotta realize it doesn't leave yeah. you out. And you should check your DNA because a lot of people where we travel are finding out that they have Jewish blood. Wow. I, right now I came from Africa. We work a lot in Kenya, Tanzania. And now the, the Maasai, I work with the Maasai people that live in the jungle, beautiful people. Wow. And they realize now that they have Jewish blood. And in 1 Chronicles 9, the book of 1 Chronicles 9, it talks about the Maasai people. And they believe that they're the lost tribe of Israel. 
Oh my it God! It's mentioned in the Bible. So who knows what blood you have? You can have Jewish blood because yeah. remember that uh, the times of Abraham, everybody, almost everybody yeah. had Jewish blood. Yeah, you know all the Jews. So yeah. that spreads through, you know, lifetime. So we don't know. I never knew, but I, I always had a feeling that I was a Jew. You know why? Mm. Because the Jews would gravitate to yes. me. Wherever I go, they hug me. I used to see the rabbis in the airport. They'd be looking at me, and I go over because I thank the Jewish wow. people and hug them. And and I felt something there. And you know what's really funny? Uh, I feel the same way with the Nepalese people. Wow. I come here, I hug them, love them, and, and I feel like I'm, I'm Nepalese. Wow. I really feel that. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Not too many nations do I feel that. But it's the same thing with a Jew. Mm. You go to Israel, you feel like you're home. Wow. wow this is it. This, I'm, I'm here where the Bible came alive. Yeah. Life changing. The anointing that God brings yeah. and the revelation. And I feel it right here, right now. Yeah. I feel that God's love because when. When, you know, the Word of God never comes back void. Yeah. It always establishes what it was sent out to be. And there is such an anointing here today. Because we can talk, I do TV programs all over the world, secular, Christian, whatever. Uh, but, you know, when you talk about the Bible and God, it becomes so real. I've had TV shows where people were crying just listening to what God has done in our lives and what He's doing and what He promises to do. Because it's a living word, and we're going to see the Bible alive in heaven yeah. forever. Wow. One kind of a really thing interested me was how you found out that you were a Jew. You know, I, I wish I could have you know known you better in the past, so that I would uh, right now be focused more on how you found out your identity. Anyways, uh, in some other interviews on some other days, I would really want to you know uh, cover these things very detailly. Like sure, sure. for today. I just want to end up here and I want you to tell something to your audience, something to your viewers, anything that you want to tell, the final word that you want to tell your audience. Well, the final word is that look for Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. If we're here alive today, I would have been in hell forever. I didn't believe in hell. 36 years ago, I accepted uh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Changed my whole life around. I couldn't believe that. I've been in so many other religions that never changed my life temporarily. And all of a sudden when this came, it was like, this is what I wanted all my life. Do you know, one of the things that the enemy hates, Satan hates, and he's a liar and a confused being, is that your DNA, everybody's DNA in the world has the word of Yahweh written on it. Yahweh is God. And they did uh, research in, in Israel many years ago and they took the DNA and they realized that everybody's DNA in the world has Yahweh God wow. written in it. Wow. And that's why the enemy wants to destroy it because he doesn't want to see that. Yeah. See, he knows he's defeated. He's going to be in the lake of sulfur and fire forever. We're going to be in heaven. So everybody has an opportunity to meet Jesus. And I pray that the viewers today make a decision. If you don't know Yeshua HaMashiach, if you don't know Jesus Christ, to say, Jesus, I don't really know you, but I'm trusting you to come into my heart. Uh, forgive me of my sins change my life around and let me be like you. I want to be in heaven forever uh, with you. And you know what was so amazing, uh, Thomas, that as we're saying this right now, I'm having like a vision. God gives me visions when I speak. I'm a seer and I see things in the spirit. And right now, what I saw was when Jesus was on the cross, and the two men that were with him, one was a thief, the, uh, you know, the two thieves, and one said, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, I don't believe in you, I don't, I don't care about you. But the other one said, uh, Jesus, forgive me. Yes. And uh, I want to be with you. And you know what Jesus said? Today you will be with me in heaven forever. The, one said no, the other one said yes. And that's the opportunity that we have. I had the opportunity to say no or say yes. And I realized that I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. And I said, Jesus, come into my house, into my life. Uh, in Deuteronomy 30, it says, blessing or curse, life or death, you choose. 
So we all have a choice to pick life or pick death. My life was death for many years. Okay, thank many you. Many years. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, dear guys. I really want to thank you for uh, giving your precious time to hear a wonderful witness from an American Jew. I'm really proud to have him here as a guest. Thank you. So if you want to know more about him, you can contact him in the Facebook or social media. Yeah. But at the same time, if you have not subscribed our channel, I would request you to subscribe our channel, like and share this video to as much as friends, your relatives, so that they would one day come to know Christ. Thank you so, so much for your precious time. Amen. Thank you so much. That was great.